Narcissist Ensnared. Episode 24. You stay and look after the children. I'm going after him, said Ashley. What's the point? He will be long gone. Look, you're distressed. Nothing good will come of going after him, you know. I need to confront him and tell him that he doesn't scare me. Just leave it, Ashley. I'm here now. Look, you've had a bad day. Don't get into an argument with him. No, I have to do it. Who does he think he is? Have you been drinking? asked Wynne as she picked up her car keys. I had a small vodka at four o'clock and nothing since. And <clears throat> what about you know what? said Wynne, tapping his nose. One of those isn't going to make a difference. I won't be long. She turned and headed for the door. Wynne looked at the clock. It was five past nine. Amelia was content drawing, so he headed up to the bathroom and saw Ashley had left the cocaine on the side in the ensuite. He picked up the packet and noted she'd either had more than one line or rather a large one. He shook his head. He grabbed the note and checked he had not been followed before taking a line himself and then secreting the packet back in his jacket pocket. He went back downstairs and as he passed the study, he noticed that Ashley had left both her telephones on the bookcase. Just inside the room, Amelia wandered up to him. I'm going to pack my case now. OK, good idea. Where has Mum gone to? Oh, she's just had to run an errand. Oh, OK. She won't be long, I'm sure, reassured Wynne. Amelia nodded and headed upstairs. Wynne returned to the kitchen and continued to watch the film. Amelia wandered back and forth, getting her bits and pieces together, before she announced she was getting into bed. Wynne said that he would come and check on her presently. She said good night and walked away. A few minutes later, the house phone rang. Wynne looked at the handset and saw on the display the number was Peter's mobile. He declined to answer it and hoped that Amelia wouldn't either. It rang and then went to the voicemail, but no message was left. The phone rang again. Wynne saw, once again, that it was Peter. He heard Amelia coming downstairs. My dad keeps ringing, but I don't want to speak to him, she said. She placed the bedroom handset on the side. I've brought the phone down as it's disturbing me. OK, said Wynne. Amelia departed and Wynne looked at the clock. It was now 9.45pm. What on earth was Ashley doing? The house phone rang once again. Wynne peered at the number that came on the display. It was a mobile telephone number again. It was not Peter's number. He didn't recognise it. Wynne let the phone ring, and then the voicemail kicked in. Hi, this is Ashley. I'm not able to answer the phone. Please leave a message. The phone beeped. Ian, pick up, pick up, oh, pick up. It was Ashley. Wynne grabbed at the phone. Hello, hello? He heard nobody there. He had been too slow. Replacing the handset, he wondered where she was when the landline ran again. The same mobile number showed, and Wynne picked up the phone. Ashley? Oh, Ian, it's me. What's wrong? I've crashed the car. You've done what? I've crashed the car. Jesus, are you hurt? No, I'm okay. Good God, what happened? Have you been drinking? Yes. For fuck's sake, Ashley, you told me that you had not been drinking. I had to, otherwise you'd have stopped me going. Damn right I would have done so. God, what on earth were you thinking? Where are you now? Whose phone are you ringing on? Some people saw me beside the side of the road. I was trying to run home and they saw me and picked me up. They're very kind. So where are you now? Down by Brummel Bridge. They're going to take me to the Honest Banker and I'll buy a drink there and pretend I've had a drink after the crash. What do you think? I think you should come back here. Peter has telephoned the house twice. Jesus, has he? Yes. What happened? I must have hit some mud or something coming round at the junction. I skidded across the road and hit a fence and then a tree. It's a good job I hit the tree, otherwise I would have rolled down into the river. Sounds like you're lucky that you're not hurt. 
I know. I, I just panicked and ran off. I was running up the road calling out your name. Look, just come back here and we can try and sort this mess out. Okay, okay, I'll do that. He ended the call and ran his hand across his face. He really ought to have stopped her. He thought she had been drinking, although she was walking straight and was not slurring her words. It was the fact that she was upset and distressed that had actually troubled him the most. Wynne paced up and down as he wondered what to do. He wondered if the police had been involved and if anybody had seen the crash. She was very lucky and fortunate to be driving a robust 4 by 4 vehicle, something smaller, and Ashley may not have fared so well. Wynne was of the firm view that Ashley needed to get back to the house, and once inside she could stay hidden, and then they could work out what to do about the car later on. The important thing was for her to come back to the house. Wynne walked up and down. He could not hear any noise from upstairs and assumed that Amelia had finally fallen asleep. Christopher remained sound asleep as he invariably did. He wondered where she was and why she was taking such a time to return to the house, when all of a sudden Wynne heard the sound of knocking coming from the front door. Wynne realised that she must have left her keys in the car, or maybe she had not taken them with her in the first place if she was knocking at the front door. Wynne looked across to the bowl on the worktop and saw that her house keys were sat nestling there. Wynne walked through into the hallway and turned the lock at the top of the door and pulled it open. Stood on the other side of the door, was a police officer and Peter. <laughs>